So I assume by the way this looks that you know what we're going to be talking about today and or you just read the title, but we are going to be talking about pothos, which is a wide variety of plants here, and peace lily. So what's going on guys, Justin from H2O Plants, and here we're talking about pothos and peace lily. And the reason why I wanted to discuss these plants today is because they are two of the easiest to grow and probably the most readily available house plants that you can find that you can actually use inside of your aquarium in certain ways. Now, let me just preface this, you cannot submerge the leaves underwater of either one of these plants. That is not the purpose of these plants. The purpose of these plants is actually to help to absorb all the fish waste that your fish produce. So now if you have a really planted tank or you kind of don't have a large fish load and you don't feed a lot, you may not need these. And This isn't for every single tank. You don't need these for every single tank. But those of you with high fish loads or you don't have a whole lot of plants in the aquarium, maybe just a couple, so a lot of goldfish keepers or cichlid keepers, this may be a good option for you because this is going to help eliminate all that waste or help to bring the waste levels down. And the reason being is pothos and peace lily, which is actually this guy right here. So let me just say that we don't sell pothos on the website because it's not really commercially available for me to purchase to be able to sell it to you guys and I can't possibly grow enough of it. But if you do want to pick up pothos, head to like a Home Depot or a Lowe's or any type of garden center and they'll definitely have pothos. They're relatively cheap and easy to find and you can find different varieties like this is a marbled uh, this is another marbled variegated and we have quite a few. There's even a silver pothos that I was lucky enough to find in a plant swap. And then this is also neon pothos, so a lighter green. It's almost like a lime green color, so it looks really cool. The peace lily on the other hand, we do have available because our aquarium plant distributors do actually sell this because it's a common like bog type plant or a paludarium plant, so a great plant that we do offer on the website if you want any. And we're gonna go into depth a little bit more of each of these plants. So let's first talk about pothos. What is pothos? Well, pothos is a vine-like plant. You can see here, this is actually a variegated, I forget if, it, I think it's variegated. It's also called devil's ivy too is another name for it. But this is a vining type plant. And what this is cool for is if you have your aquarium, say in your like dining room or living room and you want to kind of have something coming up and out of the tank, much like the paludary behind me, you could actually plant a little piece and allow it to kind of grow up and out like a vine. So, I just want to demonstrate here, we do have a large variety of pothos in this little vase here. And it's all growing inside of here, and I'll try and get a close-up for you. And you can see here all the roots. And this is just kind of chilling out here. This has been in here for months, and it's kind of just my area of growing out pothos. And we leave, literally leave it in here. So, pothos grows much slower in just water, as opposed to something like a pot with dirt in it, much like this pot here. But when you put it in your aquarium, you can't really put the roots in dirt unless you kind of come up with some kind of contraption like I did in the paludarium that allows the stems to be up almost out of the water because you can't have the foliage underwater. So what you actually want to do is you want to take a strip of pothos. Let's get this one for instance, right? And say you wanted to use a piece of this pothos in your aquarium. So you would snip it wherever you wanted to around here and then you'd peel off all the leaves of the stem segment that's going to go in the water because the, the leaves cannot go in the water they will melt die back and that's actually not good for your aquarium because it puts more stuff into your aquarium and the idea behind this is you want this plant to suck out a lot of it so what you do is you peel back say about three leaves and stick the stem either in the aquarium or in your hang on back filter and allow it to root and it will send out roots over time eventually those roots may work their way down all the way to your substrate which is completely fine just as long as the leaves stay up out of the water. And pothos is just a really easy plant to grow. It grows out of control. I have some in our living room. Keep in mind it is potted, it's not an aquarium, but it will do the same thing over time. It will kind of just spread out and go anywhere uh, that you put it to. So you just want to kind of train it to do whatever you want. Maybe go around the rim of your aquarium, maybe climb on the wall. Uh, maybe go around your whole uh, house or room or apartment, whatever you want to do. It's a really versatile plant. Doesn't need a whole lot of light, super low light, and hardy plants. So that's why I like pothos. And keep in mind, there are other forms of pothos and there's other forms of vining plants that can be used in the aquarium. This is just one of the easiest ones and the most commonly available one that I saw. So I really wanted to bring that to attention and kind of discuss pothos. Let's talk about peace lily. This guy is my other peace lily. So we sell the peace lilies like I showed you before. This is a potted peace lily. This peace lily I've had for about a year now. Um, but it was big when I got it. So this is a couple of years old, this player. And it does get rather big. But same thing with pothos is you can take the peace lily, 
and whether you create some sort of rig, you could even say use like a plastic cup, put a suction cup on it using hot glue, stick that to the back of your aquarium in the water, and put a little substrate if you want, or a little gravel or something, and you could put this right in there, or figure out some other way of holding it in place. And you just want to keep the roots and a little bit above the roots underwater, right? You don't want to submerge like this much of the plant. You kind of just want to leave just the bottom inch or so underwater. And it's a really cool plant. It's very leafy, but what's even really special about this plant is it does get a, a little white flower. Uh, this one's just about to fully open here. It will get big over time. Like I just showed you this plant, this plant gets huge over time, but it will take a very long time to get to that. And it may also even kind of shorten up once it's in your aquarium, depending on the light in the room. This plant is actually kept in a fairly decently dark area of our house. It's kept in the entryway hallway, and all it has is a little light coming from the doorway, and it's not a south or east facing window, which gets the most light. It's a northwest facing window. So it's probably one of the worst facing windows that you can have for lighting and it still grows. So these could grow under extremely low light. Same thing with these, they're, they're excellent at growing under low light. So this is a very just easy to grow uh, two aquarium plants that do two different things. Now keep in mind, this isn't a vining plant. This will continually grow bigger leaves and bush out from its center mass, but it won't get, you know, it won't have vines, but it will produce pups off the side. So baby plants that eventually, if you wanted to, you could divide off and replant in uh, elsewhere. So at any point you could pot this up if you really want to, take it out of the aquarium, same thing with the pot goes, you could take it out, pot it up into a pot and restart the cycle if there's babies, you know, for this or if you want to cut a piece of the vinyl. Like I said, they are relatively easy to grow hardy house plants that can go in your aquarium and the main reason, like I said, is they are great at absorbing toxins in the water and the reason being is the foliage is exposed to your air. So what it's doing is it has full access to the CO2 or carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that it can absorb through its leaves and grow much faster. So not only is it helping your aquarium because it's detoxifying your aquarium, but it's also helping to clean your air in your house so you get cleaner air to breathe. So that's why these are really good. That's why I have them all over the house and I recommend them for really anybody. It's not necessary if you don't want to. It's just something else that you can do with your aquarium and spruce it up even cooler, have some foliage coming out of the aquarium, which is really cool. But that's about it guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed, hit that like button and leave me a comment down below if you use houseplants, either Pothos, Peace Lily, or any other houseplant in your aquarium. There are many others, these are just two. I would say there's probably at least like 20 more that I could just think of off the top of my head, and I'm sure there's many more. So drop a comment down below and let me know what you use. And if you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button, the little round button. And if you want to check out the video on our paludarium, which I mentioned so much in this video, make sure you click over there. And if you want to check out the video that we did on our top five nano aquarium plants, you can click right there. And I'll see you guys next time. Also, happy Thanksgiving.